Hey everybody, welcome to this month's video. My name is Dave Hiddeman. I am the Senior Sales Engineer with Trimble for the Tecla Structures Steel segment. And uh, this video is actually a follow-up to the previous video where we talk about the new DSTV to DXF converter that gives a nice dialog box over the old um, sort of not very interactive method for converting DSTV files to DXF. In this follow-up video, we're going to be talking about the DSTV to DXF converter template uh, that you see here when you search for DXF in the Applications and Components catalog. And you may have seen this thumbnail in the last video and wondered what the heck it was for, so that's what we're going to talk about this month. The idea behind this converter macro that we've got here is to help automate the process so that you don't have to come in here, double-click on uh, this DSTV to DXF converter thumbnail. You don't have to load the, the appropriate settings that you want. You don't have to come in here and click add to you know browse to those files. The idea with this DSTV to DXF converter template is to automate that process. Once you have your settings saved, once you have a, a defined location where you want them to go, and perhaps you have different settings for different clients who have different requirements. Um, so this converter template can really help in speeding up that process. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, first off, what you want to do is you want to right click on this and you want to choose edit. And this is going to open up in whatever text uh, file editor that you have. I'm running Notepad++, but reg regular old Windows Notepad will work fine. And um, a macro like this is actually code, but I don't want you to feel overwhelmed or, or say, you know, well, I'm not a programmer, I don't want to mess with this. It's a very simple file to edit. Um, but first thing you want to do is create a copy of it. You want to do a save as. So I'll do that here. I'm just going to go file, save as, and I'm going to change this to like a customer DXF conversion one. Okay, so just my first customer requirement. That way, I, when I run this macro, it's going to be uh, specific for that client. So I'll say save. And then the part that I want you to focus in on, scroll past all this stuff here. And if you, if you really want to read about it, feel free. It'll tell you a lot about how this file is actually uh, working uh, behind the scenes here. But really, all you need to focus on is these five or so lines right here, okay? The first one is, what is the name of the saved attribute file that you want to use? So in the previous video, I showed how you can customize your layer names and things like that, and then save it away as a new file type. I'm going to call this standard, just, you know, run in the standard to keep things simple. The input folder, where can I find the NC1 files that have been created that I want to convert into DXFs. So in if you're working in the US the and you're using our out of the box, you know, settings, you're going to have an NC files plates folder when you generate your plate NC files. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that end text. I don't need to get the whole model path. And uh, back here in my text file, I'm going to paste that in and when you see this dot slash nc files, the dot is simply saying, look in the current model folder, okay? Uh, for the destination file, where do I want these files to go? I'm going to go ahead and say somewhere totally different. I have uh, in my Google Drive, I created a folder called my DXF files. This, of course, could be uh, a file that the shop has access to or a, or sorry, excuse me, a folder that a shop has access to or a folder that's specific to a client or a customer. So I'll go ahead and I'll copy that folder path and I'm going to edit that right here uh, to say, go to my G drive, okay? And the last thing here that we don't need, at least with the out-of-the-box US settings, maybe you need to customize these, but I'm going to go ahead and just take out all of these requirements of PL, BPL, uh, for any sort of special prefix. I'm just going to say asterisk.nc1. Any nc1 files you find in that folder, go ahead and convert them for me. And that's it. So it's really basic. You choose a, a file name to load. Where do I get them from? Where should they go? What files do I find? That's all you need to modify. So if I save this file and go ahead and close it, um, I do have to reopen the model so that it can see that new uh, macro file. So I'm just going to go ahead and reopen the model real quick. And 
And now that the model has reopened, you can see I've got a new customer DXF uh, conversion number one. And you can, of course, create a thumbnail for that. I'm not going to. Um, I don't think it really is required, but if you wanted to create a thumbnail, you could. Um, and when you're ready, once you have your NC files created, it's very simple. You just come over here and double click on it and let it work its magic. Now, when it runs, if you see down in the bottom left, it says converted successfully. So it did what I asked it to do. And if I go back and look in that My DXF Files folder, you can see there's all the DXFs that were created from the plates. So no loading attributes, no choosing paths or anything like that. You can set one of these macro files up for every client or every machine. You know, obviously this is going to look different for different people. The nice thing about these macro files is they are universal across all of your projects. It is not a per project setting. So once you create it, it's going to be there for everything. Okay. So anyway, just wanted to provide a follow up to the last, um, t you know, what's new video um, explaining what that second thumbnail does. I hope you find this helpful, and uh, again, go ahead and leave any uh, comments or thoughts or questions below, uh, and like always, thank you for watching. Appreciate it.